Hey guys, Scare9 here. Welcome back to my channel today, and it is that time of year again. We are once again going to be ranking every single exotic within Destiny 2. This time it is going to be a list of all 29 total exotic weapons. Let's get a couple of things straight before we jump into the video. First of all, this is being made on May 31st, 2018. It is update 1.2.1. The War Mine just launched like three weeks ago. So because of this, only certain weapons and changes are going to be in the game. If you were watching this in October and Mr. XX Greedy Monkey 420 Blaze it is down typing in the comments because I forgot X Exotic, it's because that exotic didn't even freaking exist yet. So calm it, man. I got you. I will update the list whenever significant changes happen or more exotics get added. In addition to this, there is rumors of the Black Spindle being in the game, but it has not been found yet, or it's not been released yet, whatever Bungie decides, so it is not going to be part of this list. Just imagine, it's probably about a step or two higher than Darcy, so there you can pretty much rank it yourself. And one final note, there are not going to be any exotic catalysts in this video. This is not taking into consideration any bonus perks, any bonus stats, anything like that. This is the base exotic, because it would take freaking forever to get every single catalyst. If you are interested and seeing my breakdowns of those though, I will have my Catalyst playlist linked down in the description below. So let's just go ahead and get into this. So there are going to be three tiers. The bottom tier are exotics that, in my opinion, absolutely need to be reworked or buffed, or they just need a lot of work in general. Tier two are exotics that feel pretty good, but they're either extremely limited in their utility, or they could use some more love, or you know, just they're all right, but they're not the best. And tier one are essentially the top of the top exotics that they define how exotics should feel, look, and play. So at the very bottom of the list, my least favorite exotic in the game, I really hope everyone understands this at this point, it is going to be the Jade Rabbit. Now this weapon's main perk is called Fate of All Fools. Chain body shots to gain bonus damage on your next persistent shot and return ammo to the magazine. Now in my opinion, there is no reason to ever use this weapon. It has one of the worst time to kills in the Crucible ever at 1.2 seconds. Everything else is better than that. You could throw rocks at someone and kill them faster than 1.2 seconds. It can also be outclassed by multiple legendary scout rifles, the purpose, the nameless midnight, and many, many Many, many, many more are better than this weapon. In addition, the Jade Rabbit's exotic perk really doesn't offer pretty much anything in terms of utility. Essentially, it's a waste of an exotic slot in my opinion. I get that some people have like an emotional attachment with this weapon and that is perfectly fine, but from a purely statistical standpoint, this thing is garbage, and that's really all there is to it. Now, the second worst exotic in the game, in my opinion, has to be the Prometheus Lens. Its perk Prismatic Inferno makes it so that it fires a solar trace beam and generates a damaging heat field that grows while the weapon continues to fire, and then you also get ammo back on each kill. My problem with this weapon is it's honestly not unique because it came after the Cold Heart, and then in addition to that, it doesn't feel that powerful. It's a lot of fun to use. Sure, you're firing a giant fiery laser, but it's just, that's it. You know, you can do this with a regular auto rifle. If you have a Ratrix's Claymore, it's 50 times more effective than this. If you're using a sack of potatoes, guess what? It's more effective than this weapon. I really want to love the Prometheus lens. It's got an awesome theme. It's got some awesome lore behind it. But at the end of the day, it's really going to need more of an oomph to make it powerful in anything. So I really hope Bungie sees our feedback, looks at this weapon, and most importantly, makes some changes to make it very powerful and to feel exotic. Now, next, we are going to be talking about the Prospector. Its main perk is called Excavation. You hold down the trigger to fire grenades, and then you release it to detonate all live grenades simultaneously. Grenades stick to surfaces and set targets on fire. Now, this weapon saw significant updates and has improved quite quite a bit since 1.2. The grenades now stick to walls and act as proximity triggers, which is something they definitely did not do before. And then they detonate on impact against players. Once again, they didn't do that. And they deal burn damage over time, all of which have made this weapon a lot better. So pair this with the fact that you get a total of eight shots from picking up one ammo crate in the crucible and you have a pretty good weapon. However, my problem with it is that it is not the most practical because it's not really reliable. It can be a one shot kill, but a lot of the time it's not. It's very, very inconsistent. The burn's pretty wonky, I found too. Sometimes people get tagged with it, sometimes they don't. And it can even have a delayed response, which my least favorite thing in this game are weapons that take longer to kill. The Dreg's 
Thomas is a perfect example of that from Destiny 1. The bullets took time to travel, and because of that, you were at an immediate disadvantage. So because of these weapons having some type of delayed response, it's not exactly my favorite thing in the world because it gives the enemy more time to trade with you. That being said, though, even though I did rank it fairly low on this list, it's honestly not too bad. It's a ton of fun. It has its specific niche. I just think there are a lot better things to use. Next, we have what I consider to be my first really controversial pick, and that is going to be the Tolesto. Its perk is called Unplanned Reprieve. Fusion Rifle Projectiles attach and detonate with a delayed void blast, which is where I have my problem with it. And also, multi-kills with this weapon immediately reload your equipped kinetic and energy weapons from reserves. So once again, there isn't anything inherently terrible about the Telesto. There just really isn't any reason to use it over a regular fusion rifle. If you're using something like the Main Ingredient or the Oriental or the Wise and Rebuke, you are pretty much guaranteed to get five very, very easy kills. Normal fusions are just as, if not more, effective. In addition, like I mentioned before, anything with a delayed kill time really, really puts a damper on my playstyle. I'm very aggressive, I'm very fast. If I can give the enemy time to trade with me, more than likely they're going to do it. So I find that the Telesto, while it does kill a lot, it gets me killed a lot as well, which is something that I know a lot of people are going to be like, adjust your playstyle, blah, blah, blah. That's all right. The Telesto, it's a lot of fun, but in my opinion, it's a lot more of a gas weapon than something you should take seriously and I'm gonna rank it accordingly on my list. If you do really love the Telesto though, let me know why down in the comment section. I feel like discussion is a huge driving point for these videos. So for any of these weapons, if you disagree with what I say, let me know why down in the comment section below and maybe you can change my mind. That would be pretty cool. The next one is going to be the Skyburner's Oath. This has two exotic perks, the first one being called Slug Rifle. This weapon lobs large explosives seeking slugs when you are firing from the hip and when you're aiming down the sight, the slugs travel fast faster and straight with higher damage and a lower fire rate. And then the other one is called For the Empire. This weapon is full auto, does extra damage to Cabal, and penetrates Fanlix shields. So this weapon is leaps and bounds better since 1.2.0. It is just so much more iconic now. It's a lot of fun. It feels a lot more powerful and it is still extremely competitive in the Crucible and should be fairly decent in most PvE activities as well. However, to me, like I said, I'm a very fast, aggressive player. It just feels a little bit slow and a little bit weak, and that puts it at a huge disadvantage for me, especially during the sniper firing mode. It's very slow. I think any weapon in the game that's a slow rate of fire scout rifle they're pretty non-competitive in terms of everything, and that doesn't help it. Now, the explosive rounds are a nice touch, but once again, travel time, delayed responses, you guys can probably start to see a pattern here, and honestly, it's a lot of fun. I'm not calling this weapon bad. If you're a slower or less skilled player, I'm not trying to dog on anyone, but this might be a weapon for you to try out. The tracking rounds are very effective. They work a lot. It's very fun to use, and honestly, the explosions make you feel very powerful. Next, we are going to be moving on to the sixth worst exotic in the game, and that is going to be the Fighting Lion. With its perks, Delayed Gratification, which makes grenade projectiles bounce off surfaces, and you hold onto the trigger, and then you release it to detonate. And then you have Thin the Herd. Direct hits do more damage to enemy combatants' shields. Rapid kills against grenade damage enemies refill the magazine. Kills always drop energy ammo. So I have a very long history of hating this weapon. However, I have to say, I was going pretty hard in the paint to get footage for this video and I had so much fun. I was laughing. A bunch of my friends were using it too. It wasn't practical in most senses, but in 6v6 Iron Banner, this thing really does shine through. You can pretty much always hit someone. You bank it off the of walls. You have a lot of fun, and yeah, it, it's a lot of fun in more casual playlists. However, in things like competitive, I really do believe you are putting yourself and your fire team, more importantly, at a disadvantage, especially in Destiny 2. Team shotting is kind of like the meta. If you miss one of these grenades that means you are out of the team shot potential for a good three seconds while you have to reload which is definitely not fun and not good for your fire team so if you are playing a bunch of casual crucible maybe you're having some fun in crucible labs or something i would probably recommend this it's a lot of fun it's definitely more of a gag weapon but it could be pretty powerful but if you were going for that radrix's claymore 
I would pretty much stay far, far away from the Fighting Lion and use something much more meta like a Graviton Lance. Next, we have the World Line Zero, the first and only current exotic sword within Destiny 2, and its exotic perk, Tesseract. You press the attack button after sprinting for a short period of time to perform a Tesseract dash attack. I just really want to love this weapon. In my opinion, it has the coolest effect out of any of the current exotic swords in the Destiny universe. It kind of combines the Dark Drinker's attack with Blink. It's so freaking cool. That being said, it's really just not as effective as I would like it to be. If you remember back to the Dark Drinker or the Raze Lighter, those were the top weapons for their respective raids. If you brought anything into Axis other than a Dark drinker people would laugh at you same thing with raise lighter into things like strikes they were the top damaging things in the game they were so powerful they were a lot of fun and they looked really cool on the other hand the world line zero just doesn't put out these crazy numbers it can't compare i find myself struggling to kill basic like phalanxes with it sometimes which is definitely not something that should be happening when something looks as cool and sounds as cool as the world line zero exotic sword i think it has amazing potential but where it sits now is just not good enough it's that plain and simple it needs a major reworking and a major buff now we have reached the final exotic in tier 3 and this is going to be the sweet business this one's perks are called Payday, which features a larger magazine and increased accuracy when firing from the hip, and Business Time. Holding down the trigger boosts this weapon's range and rate of fire and automatically loads ammo pickups into the magazine. Now, I really do have a ton of fun with this weapon. It's a freaking Gatling gun. I think everyone loves using it. But in an exotic update that is all about power and feeling powerful and doing a bunch of damage, it really does fall short. Just look at this clip here. I stand in an empowering rip that automatically reloads my weapon and fire at least least 200 bullets into this boss and it does nothing i'm way above his light level like i said i'm in an empowering rift I should be doing tons of damage, yet I do like an eighth of his health, and then I pull out a rocket, and it does even more damage than that. And that's pretty sad to me. Something that looks this big should feel this big. It should feel very powerful. I just think that if it gets a little bit more love in the damage department, specifically in PvE, I think this thing would be good to go. Now we have reached tier two. Once again, these are kind of the medium tier exotics in the game. A lot of them are really good in specific scenarios, but not necessarily in the entire game. And to start off this tier we're going to be taking a look at the rat king and its perks rat pack this fully automatic weapon becomes stronger when nearby allies also have it equipped and this stacks up to six times and then vermin reloading immediately after a kill grants a brief period of invisibility so this is probably the last remaining purely fun exotic in the game that's not saying it's not good because it's pretty good but it still doesn't really compare to a lot of other exotics in the game that being said if you can get an entire fire team together and you guys are all using this thing it's definitely pretty hilarious, but that's really where I see the downfall of it. You need at least three of your fire team to be using this, if not all six people in your fire team. And that means that you don't need one exotic slot to be good. You need three to six. And that's not really the best way to design a weapon, in my opinion. It's got a really cool mechanic. It's a lot of fun to use, but it's not the most practical thing. You don't see people, or many people at least, taking this into a Leviathan raid. And that's for a good reason. It's a lot of fun to use in things like strikes and maybe even crucible but i think you know it's not exactly going to ever be the best weapon just because of the theme of it and i think uh that pretty much decides where it falls on this list the next one is going to be the exotic smg the huckleberry and its perk ride the bull increased rate of fire and recoil while you are holding down the trigger kills with this weapon reload a portion of the magazine so at first glance the huckleberry seems like a very top tier weapon it should be it's an exotic smg smgs are pretty top tier in crucible right now so you think this thing would be really good however it's honestly not as great as i and a lot of people expected it to be now don't get me wrong it's very very effective at close ranges but nothing sets it apart from like regular legendary smgs for me personally rampage only lasts five seconds and in crucible only does one extra damage per bullet which is nothing you still need the same amount of bullets to kill someone maybe like one less bullet on the low resilience targets in addition this small magazine size of 30 for such a fast rate of 
fire means there's almost no room for error. I think it, with the 15 bullets that you get back per kill, you would be very lucky to get a triple kill with this, if it's even possible. So that's something that I think could be really examined about this weapon. I really like the idea of 30 bullets solving all your problems. That's the flavor text for the weapon. It's a cool kind of motto. I just think if you want this thing to be effective, especially in like the crucible arena of the game, it needs something just a little bit more. And the masterwork might be what that needs. But once again, this list does not go over the masterwork or catalyst variants of these weapons. The next exotic in this tier is yet again, another warm mind weapon. It is going to be the Polaris Lance. With its perk, the perfect fifth where precision hits return ammo to the magazine landing four precision hits loads a delayed solar explosive round to your next shot now i really wish this weapon was a bit better because it's so much fun to use it looks really cool it's got an amazing backstory it feels really fun something like the sunshot is very comparable to this you're making things blow up that's a lot of fun the main problem falls within the archetype of the weapon itself. We've already discussed with the Jade Rabbit and with the Skyburner's Oath, slow rate of fire scout rifles are not good. Yes, you do get nearly infinite ammo while using this weapon and proccing its perk, which is why it's this high up on the list, but its archetype makes it extremely bad for DPS, which does not help it at all. In addition, it's also an energy weapon, so it doesn't get that additional critical damage multiplier that kinetic weapons do. So all in all, the infinite ammo is really nice, the weapon is really smooth, it's a ton of fun to use, but statistically, it could be a lot better, especially in PvE. It's not the best exotic, but there are definitely worse things to use, and that's why I put it in tier 2. The next one is going to be another weapon with infinite ammo. It is going to be the exotic SMG, the Risk Runner. It features the perk's arc conductor. When taking arc damage, this weapon becomes more powerful and resists incoming arc damage, and kills extend the time in this overcharged state, and super conductor. When arc conductor is active, shots fired have a chance to be become chain lightning and return ammo. So like I said, essentially you still get unlimited ammo with this if you play correctly, but why did I rank this weapon above Polaris Lance? In my opinion, it seems to be a lot more effective at killing targets. While the Polaris Lance has more ammo, of course it's a lot easier to proc, versus things like bosses specifically, the Risk Runner actually puts out damage unlike the Polaris Lance. In addition, it's a ton of fun to use. The idea of taking damage and making yourself more powerful is such an amazing concept, and I think think it is implemented very well, and especially when you're fighting things like Cabal Legionaries or any of the Fallen, this weapon is so much fun to use because you never have to stop firing. While it's not the most effective weapon in the game, it's still a ton of fun to use and it's more effective than a lot of things, so I'm going to be putting it here on the list. The next exotic is Sturm, and of course you have to include its legendary counterpart, the Drang as well. The perk Accomplice makes it so that kills with this weapon fills the magazine of the equipped energy weapon from reserves, and Storm and Stress makes it so that that kills with a drain, reload this weapon, and overflow one bonus damage round into the mag up to 20. This makes it so that Sturm is a two-tap shot whenever you originally get a kill with the drain. Now, that's where the problem comes in. It's extremely effective if you were doing this, but if you aren't pairing this weapon with the drain, there is no reason to use it. It's just a very mediocre at best hand cannon if you aren't relying on the synergy between the two weapons. The changes that Bungie made to this combo with the update 1.2.0 made it extremely powerful but once again, if you're not rocking the Sturm and the Drain, there's no reason to do it. And that's why it's sort of here on the list. It's a ton of funny use. It's very effective in Crucible, but I feel like it would need more personality and individuality to really stick out and be a top tier exotic. Next, we have another returning exotic from Destiny 1, and this is going to be the Suros Regime and its perk, Suros Legacy, which makes it so that the bottom half of each magazine deals bonus damage and has a chance to return health on kills. Now, in Destiny 1, people were in love with this weapon. It was the top of the top for a period of time. A lot of people really identified with it even after it got nerfed. However, in Destiny 2, it's not that powerful. It's still pretty good, but my main problem with it is that it doesn't really provide a ton of incentive to use it. Its perk is essentially a knockoff version of the Crimson's perk, and further than that, it really just features a time to kill that is on par with the legendary auto rifles of the game that a lot of people use, like the positive outlook. And because of these things, it really seems to lack any incentive to use it. And to me, that's a problem. Exotic should really call out to specific playstyles and really ask you to use them. And I really just feel like the Soros regime doesn't do that. I'm not really sure how they could fix that, 
that. Maybe make the healing perk a more of a guaranteed thing. Maybe just make it a tad bit stronger. The spinning up perk really helps, but with only 30 bullets in the magazine, I feel like you don't really get to utilize that enough for it to be super effective. So I really don't know what they could do. It's still a lot of fun, but it's not the most effective weapon in the game. The next weapon on our list is going to be the hard light with its two perks volatile light. Rounds fired from this weapon have no damage fall off, over penetrate targets, and ricochet off of hard surfaces. Projectile damage increases after bounce. And then also the perk the fundamentals holding reload changes this weapon's damage type cycling between solar arc and void. So the hard light has come a very long way since my last exotic ranking list due to one big change. You can now change its elements on the fly. That is absolutely huge. This makes it more useful across multiple activities in the entirety of the game, and the new changes to how elemental damage affects shields, where matching elements now do three times and mismatched elements only do two times damage, make this weapon even more important. Whenever you're in a prestige nightfall and you can't switch weapons, but you still need a specific burn, boom, the hard light can fill any role you need it to. Personally, the only downside I really see to the hard light is the difficulty you might have controlling the stability at longer ranges. I I think that's an all right trade off though for being such a mechanically useful gun and like I said pretty much any activity you could ever use it for and uh, yeah that's why I pretty much always have one in my inventory just in case I need it. The next exotic on this list is going to be the exotic hand cannon the sunshot. It's exotic perk sunburn makes it so that it fires explosive rounds and highlights targets that take damage from the sunshot and then targets that were killed by the sunshot also explode in solar energy and this can actually chain multiple times as well. So this weapon is more satisfying to use than anything. Watching every single enemy explode into a huge fiery explosion and then continue to chain onto other enemies is not only super effective at clearing adds, but also makes this weapon feel extremely powerful, almost deceivingly so. I mainly stick to using this weapon in PvE based activities because there are a lot more enemies that feature low health, meaning there's going to be more explosions in the long run, but I actually found that it's not too bad in Crucible either. All around, it's a really fun exotic to use. If you like explosions, I have no idea idea why you aren't constantly running this weapon because it's effective and a ton of fun to use. The next one is going to be the Mina Multi-Tool and of course everyone knows that this weapon boosts your movement speed and maintains your radar while you are aiming down the site. Once upon a time this weapon was easily pretty much everyone's go-to weapon in the Crucible. Even if it wasn't statistically the best, it was the easiest to use by a long shot. It also has amazing perks and comes from a specific source so it's very easy to obtain and that just made the weapon the go-to crucible weapon in the game. Now nothing specific has happened to the Mida over the multiple sandbox updates of Destiny 2 and that is exactly the problem with the Mida multi-tool. While other weapons like the Graviton Lance and the Crimson have received major buffs that make them extremely competitive, the Mida has stayed very constant and this means that all of the weapons that it used to dominate have risen above and now do the dominating. They all feature better times to kill and are in general just better weapons that feature more incentives to use than the Mida which is just a very standard easy easy to use weapon. At the end of the day, the Mida isn't a bad weapon by any standard, it just doesn't meet the mark like it used to, and it doesn't define the meta anymore either, which is something that is very, very important to consider when making a loadout for Crucible. The next exotic on this list is the Wardcliffe Coil, with its perks Mad Scientist, which makes it fire a volley of rockets, and a Mechanized Auto Loader, which makes the weapon automatically load power ammo into the magazine whenever you pick it up. This weapon used to be one of my favorites in the game, however with the recent updates and additions to other exotics, it just doesn't feel as powerful anymore. It used to be that wacky exotic that could kill everything, but now we have like four other things that can do that, so the Wardcliffe Coil isn't as attractive. It still has an amazing theme, but once again there are so many other cool exotics and powerful exotics in the game right now that it doesn't really matter. In addition, you can't exactly expect this weapon to perform really well in activities like raids, so while it is very unique and funny use, I just can't bring myself to rank it as high as some of the more practical exotics on this list. Even though it is still a lot of fun and it is still fairly effective, it's just not what it used to be. The next exotic on this list is going to be the Cold Heart, with its perks Cold Fusion, which makes the weapon shoot a steady cold fusion powered laser, and the Longest Winter. Cold Heart's laser does exponentially more damage the longer it remains on a target. So before 1.2.0, this was one of the greatest weapons in the entire game. It was the ideal weapon for most teams to 
use on raid encounters such as Callus for maximum DPS. You barely ever have to reload. It puts out high damage very reliably, and most importantly, it is very easy to use. However, after 1.2.0, once again, there's a lot of weapons that can also do this, and arguably even better. Because of this, it is no longer the go-to weapon in activities like Eater of Worlds or even Spire of Stars, but it's still an amazing weapon and extremely viable in various activities. In addition, it's super unique and a ton of fun to use, so could the Cold Heart be more powerful to compete with things like the Sleeper Simulant? Yeah, it probably could. Does it really need to be that powerful to be a standout exotic? Definitely not. Now we have reached the, the final exotic in tier 2, and this is going to be the exotic fusion rifle, the Merciless. Its perks conserve momentum, make it so that non-lethal hits with projectiles, make this weapon charge faster until its wielder gets a kill, and impetus, reloading immediately after a kill increases weapon damage for a short time. Yet another weapon that used to be the best of the best when talking about the hardest end game activities of Destiny 2, the Merciless was essentially the Galhorn at the launch of the game. However, now there are so many better weapons that it has taken a very hard hit in terms of its ranking. Curtain Call, the Sleeper Simulant, and multiple other things have proven to outrank Merciless, moving it way down the list. It's still a very fun, very powerful weapon, but just like the Wardcliff Coil, it's just not the powerhouse that it used to be. Now we have reached tier 1, and the first weapon we are going to be looking at in this tier is going to be the Borealis. With its perk the fundamentals, you can hold reload to change the weapon's damage type, and Ionic Return makes it so that breaking an enemy's shield transfers one bullet from the reserves to the magazine, and breaking a combatant's shield or the shield of a guardian using a super with that shield's energy type it grants double damage for the rest of the magazine. So this is where I believe I would put the Borealis, but I play on Xbox, so I've never personally used it. I'm only going off of gameplay that I've seen and not what I've played with. I do think the Borealis is extremely powerful in things like Night Falls, heck, even things like Raids if you can time it correctly, and especially now in Crucible, which is very interesting. It's the first time in Destiny history that we've had a sniper rifle that is a one-shot kill that is really supposed to be a one-shot kill. I know we had the thing with like Final Round and Luck in the Chamber Destiny 1, but that was sort of like a, an overlooked mechanic slash bug that they ended up fixing. This will not be fixed. That is actually the exotic perk of the Borealis, which is very interesting, and I cannot wait to get this thing, hopefully in September, with the new expansion. The next exotic we are going to be talking about is the Colony, and everyone knows what this thing does. It fires spiders that track you down and blow up and kill you, which is super terrifying and extremely self-explanatory why it is this high on the list. It's essentially two free kills in any Crucible mode, and it's super easy to use. It would be higher, but it doesn't have quite the payoff as some of the more difficult exotics to use, which we'll get to in a seconds, but you can get an average of two kills with it, maybe even more if enemies are clumping up, and honestly that just makes it a great exotic. It's really cool, it's very easy to use, it's got an amazing theme, and it makes people scared, which is really fun, and that's why I ranked the colony this high up on the list. The next exotic is going to be the exotic pulse rifle, the Vigilance Wing, with its perk Harsh Truths. When a nearby ally is killed, you gain health regeneration and increased movement speed and the last stand. Improved weapon performance and greatly increased recovery when its wielder is the last living member of a fire team. Now, since the launch of Destiny 2, this thing has been consistently amazing in the Crucible, and the changes it received with update 1.1.4 only help solidify it as a staple of the Crucible. It now has the amazing ability to two burst enemies with low resilience, and even if you manage to miss a few bullets per those bursts, you can actually have a very forgiving three burst kill, which is very awesome, and you still have a very, very, very competitive time to kill. This weapon was designed for the Crucible, and as such is an excellent choice for anyone to use. The next one is going to be the only current raid exotic in the game, the exotic shotgun, the Legend of Acrius. Its perk Shock Blast makes it so that it fires a high damage arc energy that over penetrates enemies, and Long March makes it so that you detect enemies on your radar from further away. Once again, this is a very, very rewarding power weapon to use. However, I consider it to be even more rewarding than the Colony. It can one-shot supers, kill through newly placed Titan Shields, and even grant easy multi-kills. In addition to being super effective, it is also a ton of fun to use. In PvE, if Arc Burn's on, it shreds bosses. Even if Arc Burn isn't on, you can shoot Phalanxes through their shields, you can pretty much kill a group of enemies with one shot. It's really just a lot of fun. All around, the Legend of Acrius is a great example of how I think raid exotics should perform. They should be very powerful, they should have amazing themes, and most importantly, they should be a ton of fun to use, and the Legend of Acrius does all of these things perfectly.
correctly. Now, the next weapon is going to be the Crimson. Its perk band weapon makes it so that it fires a three round burst and Cruel Remedy makes it so that kills with this weapon heal the wielder and precision kills also refill the magazine. Now, previously with the Curse of Osiris, I ranked this as the best exotic in the entire game and it has only gotten better. The main changes is that it is now more of a PVP oriented weapon. It has an amazing time to kill, constantly replenishes your health, has a very impressive range, and if you're accurate, you never need to reload. After 1.2.0, it feels so much better, and I feel like my baby from Destiny 1, the Red Death, has finally returned, and I love using this weapon. The next weapon is going to be something that I am probably going to get a lot of flack for because I have always hated this weapon, and now it's really good. It is going to be the Darcy, and yes, I am ranking it currently as the fourth best exotic in Destiny 2. Essentially, whenever you are aiming down the site and you try to do precision damage, if you are locked onto a target, you will do significantly more damage, making it one of the best, if not the best, weapons to use in raids. Like I said, I have constantly dogged on this weapon, but, you know, Bungie did a fantastic job of improving it. Like I said, it now can out-DPS the Sleeper, Rockets, pretty much anything in the game if you are consistent with it. My only problem is that the recoil is very hard to control, especially on consoles. I get it if you're on PC, you have the mouse. It's a little bit easier. On console, even if you play on maximum sensitivity, it can be very difficult to keep it held down, especially if you are firing and the max fire rate. So that's the only downside to this weapon. However, it's still an absolute powerhouse and deserves more attention than it gets, even though a lot of people are already calling it the best weapon to use for raids. Now we have reached the top three exotics, in my opinion, in Destiny 2 currently. Number three is going to go to the Graviton Lance. I have always wanted this thing to be amazing in the game. It's always looked really cool. It's always sounded amazing. And Bungie finally did it. They reworked the weapon. It's now a two-shot burst. It now kills in three bursts. Its seeking rounds are super powerful all around. It's just one of the most amazing, powerful weapons in Destiny history. Everyone's using it. And like I said, it's for a good reason. It's very powerful and it's very easy to use. And it tops us all off by being super accurate, having a great fire rate, and having an amazing time to kill all around the graviton lance has finally ascended to a position where i am happy to say i am in love with this weapon now the number two exotic is something that i'm personally surprised with i didn't see this coming at all it is going to be the tractor cannon now once again this was an insane transformation from how this weapon performed in vanilla it was pretty much a gag weapon people used it because it was bad it was funny it was cool to push people off of cliffs but it wasn't practical in many senses well bungie has now made it so it not only suppresses enemies but it enemies that were hit by this weapon also take 50% more void damage. This was the only way people were able to beat Spire of Stars on day one. It's the only way most teams are able to beat any of Escalation Protocol. And honestly, it's just amazing how this weapon went from being in no one's inventories to everyone pretty much having one copy on every one of their characters because it is that important in pretty much every activity in the game. And now we've reached the final exotic for this video. Of course, it is going to be the Sleeper Simulant with its perk German Sleeping Beauty. I'm not going to even try to pronounce it. This weapon's laser over penetrates enemies and refracts off of hard surfaces. This thing was the best weapon in Destiny 1 and it has returned to reprise its role. My earlier testing shows it does nearly double the damage of rockets, which is very interesting. While it might not do as much DPS overall as the Darcy, it is much easier to use. You can hit those shots, there's no risk of you missing any of your DPS, and it's better in more activities. While the Darcy, you really need a big boss with a huge crit point that is standing still, the Sleeper Simulant can pretty much take down anything. You need a general Major Slayer, the Sleeper can do that. You need a weapon to put out insane damage on any boss in the game, Sleeper has your back. Hell, this weapon is actually even effective pretty much in any range in the crucible being a one shot body shot which is really interesting it might not be my first choice to take into the crucible but i'm not afraid to do so this weapon is quite literally top tier in every single activity and overall it does one very very important thing it makes you feel like a god in space and that's exactly what all exotics should be in destiny 2 
So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. That is going to conclude all the rankings. Let me know what you guys did or did not agree with down in that comment section below. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to leave a like rating and to share it with your friends. If you are interested in watching either of the two videos on screen, you can click their respective annotations to be taken to them. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to hit the giant version of my logo on screen to be subscribed to my awesome Destiny 2 videos and live streams. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I will see you in my next video.